Welcome to the Good News Program. My name is Bill Robinson, and I'm your host for this evening's program. And a very special guest, you didn't come by boat. No. No, okay. You didn't come by motorcycle. No. Dick May from Winthrop. Thank you for yes. coming over, Dick. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Um, actually, you've been on the program before. I have. And for you people who watch us on a regular basis, he was one of those four motorcycle guys that came over the hill. And he was sitting right over here, and we had a great interview with him. And um, he's been back uh, since then to address our men's breakfast on yes. Saturday morning. And um, he has a fantastic uh, testimony. For you people who don't know what the word testimony implies here, it's simply this, how Jesus Christ changed his life. Mm -hmm. Spun it right around. Uh, but that testimony to get there is, is the story to get there is really... Uh, just neat, because he does it differently, Dick. Was so, you know, it's like snowflakes. They're all different, yeah. different with every person that we've had and on the planet Earth. Everyone would be different how he became real to them. So we want to start off. Uh, we're going to ask you some questions, and you can tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I've got, although you live in Winthrop, you were born and raised up in Malden. I I was. Yeah. Yep. Right. On. I uh, I grew up in the. Uh, uh, but in the north end of Malden, I will say the north end, but near Melrose. Okay, yeah. You know, I grew up in that area. Right near Pine Banks Park. Right, exactly. Okay, I yeah. know where you are. Yeah, it, it's uh, and went to school. Uh, well, I went to school. I, I I went to school in Malden as in grade school, but yeah. then uh, I went uh, to Everett Vocational. Okay. To be a uh, cabinet maker. Uh huh. Back when cabinet making was uh, was in. Yeah. Before they had all this mass production. Right. You know, yeah. You know. And. You're the only child. I am. And your family was went to church? We went to church, yeah. Not sure what we knew about going to church, but we went to church probably like so many other people. Yeah, probably like 95% of the population. Probably, yeah. yeah. We just went to church, I guess, because family went. Ma went, mama, daddy, grandma, grandpa went. Yeah. You know, so we just went. I went. Okay. And you told me you're a pretty good student? I thought so. A's and B's, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, not bad. That's not bad. Really? And... The thing is, uh, I asked you, you know, your interest, and we said girls, and you said, well, yeah. Well, yeah, I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, this, but no drugs. No, no drugs, no drugs. Uh, I, when I got out of school, I uh, went and joined the Navy. Yeah. Uh, that was something that uh, my, one of my cousins was older than me, was in the Navy, and we talked a lot, and I just had a passion to go in the Navy, loved the ocean, loved the sea, and just wanted to go. So I joined. Well, so you didn't have a dramatic thing with alcohol and drugs? No, nothing major, nothing, you know, it's a sampling of the, of the alcohol like, yeah. any, like any teenager, yeah. you know. But no, uh, no, no experience of a big turnaround here because a lot of the people we do have have the turnaround. That's why every, every testimony is unique because some of the guys going to be watching this out there or some gal say, gee, I never had that problem. Is something the matter? So, you know, yeah. you didn't. Yeah. Well, no, you know, it, it, I was just into me. Okay. That's all. Just into me. Whatever, whatever, whatever each day led me, wherever it led me, that's where I went. That's okay. what I did. Yeah. It was, um, I enjoyed life. All right. And, uh, you know, just, uh, it wasn't a matter of, you know, I, I, I was, I was just as lost as somebody that may have been on drugs or alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know, just. Right. If you're lost, you're lost. Doing my own thing. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're looking at your belly button. Yeah. That's yeah, it. That's yeah. what we tell them. Na and what's that? Navel gazing, I call Naval it. <laughs> yeah, right. Navel gazing. So, yeah. <coughs> out of the Navy, then what happens? Well, I kind of joined, uh, well, I went to, uh, became an, an insurance salesman. And I spent about five years in the insurance business, uh, so I was a salesman for that. And I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. I really wasn't sure what I was going to be. Just kind of fell that way. I had an old Irish guy. Yeah. Uh, brought me in as an insurance so, to, salesman. Told me I could sell anything, and you know, I'd make a fortune. Never, r never really happened. <laughs> uh, straight commission. It was really, really <coughs> tough. And from there, I went into uh, work for a uh, a, uh, a freight forwarding company and uh, yeah. uh, an a um, trucking company. Okay. You know, you know I, I like the part uh, you talk about uh, an insurance salesman. Because we're going to bring that up at the end. You're still selling, and you're still selling insurance. 
That's right. Yeah, but we're right. a different kind. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll remind you at the end of the program that he was an insurance salesman, and he's still doing it. That was 40 uh, years ago. <laughs> How old? That was 40 years ago. 40 years ago. All yeah. right. Well, that's what Moses spent in the desert, didn't he? Huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, but you said you were very shy in school. I was very shy in school. Very shy. The teacher would call on me, and it was like I wanted to vanish. It, it, and I remember an experience in my sixth grade where my English teacher called on me to, to answer a question, and it was very funny because she just looked at me as if like something extreme just happened. I just so panicked, I start, started to stutter, and at the same moment, my seat, you know, back then we had the, the, the seat and the desktop with the yeah. ink well. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people won't remember those. Uh, and it, the pin broke, the power broke in it, and the seat started to sink. <laughs> so here's the desk, and I'm sinking down, and my head was going down, and she thought I was just trying to hide and disappear. <laughs> but that's how shy I was, you know. Okay, and that's another thing we're going to bring back, because today you're not shy. That's what, that's what, that's one of the things God has done in his life, you know? Mm. Um, you're working, but you end up with a ruptured disc. I was in the construction business. I, I got into the construction business. Or, well, not really construction. I, I, I toyed with it, but I was work in the, uh, in the insurance, and then I was in the sales business, and uh, I wound up with a ruptured disc in my back. Mm-hmm. And um, it was so bad that the, I, I would go to the doctors. I actually went to the uh, soldiers' home to, to see the doctors there for it. And um, they said I needed a, a back operation. And um, I just just didn't want to have a back operation. I knew too many guys that had had at the time back. This was, again, you know, remember many years ago. Uh, and they weren't perfected, probably yeah. like they are today. Uh, so I just, uh, I, I lost everything. Lost my job, lost a place to live, and I wound up homeless. You were homeless. I wound up homeless. I wound okay. up uh, in the streets, um, and you know I was so dumb that back then that I didn't know any better. I thought it was the greatest thing since power steering. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have a clue. You know, this man, you know, go down, you hang down the beach. You're yeah. homeless. You, you uh, then you hang out with the boys, and you just stand out there at night, and you go, man, this is living. Okay. D didn't have an idea. Yeah. What, what living was. Okay, now you have a different perspective. Now I have a different perspective. Yeah. Um, so somebody, you, went, you ended up with a, in a room in Malden? Yeah, somebody gave me an apartment because I, you know, I had nothing and somebody knew <laughs> that, uh, of a room. Put me in a room. I, I spent a year in a little room, uh, probably seven feet wide and 10, 12 feet long. Constant pain? Constant pain. I was in severe pain. I could barely move. I had to roll off the bed. Uh, to, to be able to get up to go to the, to the, to the bathroom. Um, and in that room was a bed, a dresser, uh, a broken radio. You told me 30 leaves a, a night? I was taking 30 leaves a day, you know. Oof. 30 leaves a day, I was in so much pain. And you never left the room for a year? Never left the room. Tell us about that. What happened? Well, I got to count and know how many spots were on the wall, what direction yeah. the wallpaper yeah. was. And uh, a dresser, a broken radio, the bed and a stack of newspapers that were right beside the bed. I knew everything that was in the newspapers. I read them over and over again. One day I, I had woke up and there was a Bible in a stack of newspapers. I had no clue how it got there, um, but it was there and I had read everything else and I was a captivated audience at that moment in time. So I just reached in and pulled that thing out and I opened it up and here was Jesus Christ healing people in the Bible. Well, I uh, got my attention, so I just started reading. I just started reading, and I read, oops, started from the first page, read to the back page, and started all over again, read from the first page to the back page. And then uh, in frustration, great frustration, I just said, oh, what am I doing? What am I reading this for? This has to be 10,000, 20,000, who knows how long ago it was. And um, I just got mad and threw, <laughs> threw the Bible across the, the room. And... Uh, <laughs> It hit the broken radio. The radio didn't work. Radio that didn't work. For a year. For a year. And now it's working. It came on. <laughs> it came on. Not only did it come on, it came on a Christian radio station. And a woman was given testimony in how Jesus, <coughs> Jesus had just healed her. of uh, she had Something about her legs. She had canes mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, and she had just gotten healed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you what, it really got my attention. Uh, and I just 
started reading all over again. I had to know. And I listened to that radio station. I looked forward to it every day, listened to that, especially that program. And uh, after about three or four weeks, I just knew that I had to get over there to wherever that church was mm -hmm. to find out what was going on because I kept hearing people getting healed. And I was in such agony, such pain. And it was, it was really, really awful. Mm. Uh, so I, I worked my way in, went into Boston, found the church, and uh, I walked in, and walked in through the front doors, and there were people with their hands up in the air, and somebody fell over, and I turned right around and walked out the door. Mm -hmm. I thought they were crazy. Mm -hmm. Didn't want any part of it. Didn't want to know anything about it. it. Was not part of my upbringing. They were all nuts as far as I was concerned. So I left. But you know, when God wants to get your attention, He's going to get your attention, and um, He worked on my heart. He worked on my heart and. He tugged on my heart, and I started reading that Bible again and uh, looking <coughs> and started listening to that radio station again. <clears throat> and another three or four weeks went by, and I said, uh, <coughs> I'm going to go in there again, but uh, I'm gonna, I'll outsmart those people. I'll just sit by the back door, right at the aisle, just in case anybody comes down near me to try and touch me and do that stuff on me. And uh, God outsmarted me. And he brought a woman in with a 13-year-old boy had been run over by a van, crushed his midsection. The doc, she said that the doctor said that he was never going to walk again. He had a full body cast on with clamps on both sides. And he stood next to me. I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out. Right? I would have had to knock him over to get out. Well, they came down and they laid hands on him and put, anointed him with stuff. And he went down and I just... I, I never saw it before. I never. I didn't understand it. It was not part of my my uh, my upbringing. And, uh, but I felt the power of God that day, right there. And I and I looked down, and, and that boy, he. I just I just saw him moving there, and I just felt I just felt the hair on my arms rising up. And I didn't have a clue what was going on. But after a bit, he 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 opened his eyes and he tried to get up, and and he finally unsnapped the cast. And he pulled himself up. His mother started crying. People started crying. I started crying. And uh, he stood there. And he took a step. And he took a step. And he walked all the way down that aisle. And he ran back to his mother. Everybody was crying. And right that, that moment, the place that I was in, I just said, God, I, I don't know who you are. I don't know how, uh, how you got me here, what this is all about. I said, but if you'll do that for me, if you did that for him, if you'll do that for me, I'll give you my life, and, I, and I'll never look back. Uh, nothing happened. But I went home, and when I got home, I opened up the Bible. This time I wanted to know who this Jesus Christ was that was in the Bible that just healed that little boy that I just saw. I had to know that. <clears throat> so I read the Bible from front to back, front to back, front, over and again and just wanting to know him, and just crying out, saying, God, show me who you are. Tell me who you are. And I felt the pull in my heart to go back there again. And, but I didn't go back to get healed. I went back looking for Jesus. I wanted to know. Now, I just wanted to know truth. I wanted to know who this Jesus Christ really was. Mm -hmm. And I went back that day, and uh, he introduced himself to me. He touched me and healed me instantly my ruptured disc. And I walked out of the heat. <coughs> and I haven't looked back since. And then, you know, folks, um, I didn't, we didn't put up on the, on the program, but Dick is Pastor Dick. I just get choked up, Dick, when, when I think about what he does for people in their lives. And, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, um, one thing led to another and you, and you got, you became a pastor. You have a church in Winthrop, I starting do. one in Saugus. Start, yeah. You know, it's, it's we expect. I think it's what it's a ticket. You can you're better at this. Ten thirty-seven. Don't believe me if I don't do the works of my father. He says, "Come on." Yeah. He, he does these things, yeah. and this is what he wants to do. Just as just he does, he he's moving just as much as today as he did two thousand years right. ago. It's just for hard for people to understand that. Yeah. So. A few years ago, you were diagnosed? Five years ago, a little over five years ago now. Uh, well, actually, probably about eight or nine years ago, I was going through a lot of pain. I was doing construction. Mm -hmm. I was in construction business for a long time, uh, over 30 years. 
and uh, I was ex experiencing excruciating pain in my body. Yeah. And I would go to the doctors, and the doctors would just, you know, say it's, you know, take some aspirins and go home. It's uh, <clears throat> arthritis. You know, in the business that you're in, you get a lot of arthritis. Well, that went on for a few years, and it got to a place where this is, you know, where I was really, really in severe pain. Yeah. And I would lay down on the floor, and I would roll from one side to another. I would do whatever I possibly could to try and alleviate the pain. <clears throat> and it wouldn't go away. So I, uh, I went to a chiropractor, and this is how unique God works. Uh, I went to a chiropractor, and he just, you know, how they crack your body and your bones and everything else. Well, prior to this <clears throat> a couple of years time frame, I had broken about eight ribs, uh, bumping into things, uh, and I couldn't, didn't know why, you know, but uh, I found out that my bones were filled with cancer. But I went to this chiropractor, and he pushed me against one of these pillars and pressed yeah. me against the wall, and I felt this snap in my sternum. Yeah. It, oh, yeah, it, it just it snapped my sternum. And about a week later, uh, a bump popped out. So God knew that I had to get to that chiropractor all right, to break that open for that to come out so it would be found because it was eating me up. <clears throat> I went to the doctors, and the doctors just looked at it, pressed on it, and told me it was one of those yeah. things that grow on you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. A month later, it was four times uh, as big as it was, and I went to a different wow. doctor. And this doctor did a biopsy right then and there, <clears throat> took me down, says, you gotta, we got to do this. <clears throat> a couple of days later, called me up and said, uh, you need to come down here. I need to talk to you. Oh, and bring your family. And I said, oh, this can't be good. Yeah. And uh, so we went down, we talked, and uh, she told me, you know, you've got cancer. Uh, and further tests, uh, turns out that I was stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, metastasized throughout my entire bone system. And uh, so I, I, I pulled the doctor aside, being, being men, you know, how men talk. Uh, be straight with me, I said, what's, what's the deal? <clears throat> he said, uh, with treatment at best, maybe three months. He says, go home and make your plans. You know, get your final stuff put mm -hmm. together. At that moment, I had one choice, to listen to that and believe it. Mm -hmm. Or listen to the words of God and Jesus. Mm -hmm. you know, the Bible tells us, I'm the God that heals you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, said, only believe. Yeah. All things are possible to them that believe. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, kind of said to the doctor, I says, Doc, you know, I am going to die. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to die from this cancer now. Yeah. So I said, let's make our plans and do what you have to do. Because I've got, I've got things that have to be done. I know that in my heart. So uh, mm -hmm. we went through setting it all up. And, uh, you know, I've read in the scriptures a thousand times maybe where the word says that uh, if you eat or drink any deadly poison, Mm -hmm. It will not harm you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, I always said, well, I'm never going to eat or drink any deadly poison. Not realizing we eat and drink all that stuff and breathe stuff that's poison to us. But when I got into that, into that chair and the, they were ready to put the chemo in, <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to me. That word. And I knew exactly what it meant. And I knew he was there. And I knew that this was just part of the, the life's journey mm -hmm. and everything was going to be all right. You know? And then you went and bought a motorcycle. Right then and there, as soon as they told me, I went out and bought my motorcycle. <laughs> <coughs> and you ended up... My wife and I talked about it, and she said, let's do it. Wow. Now, when we've been riding together for years. And you were chaplain of the... Uh... We, uh, I became a uh, member of the uh, New Life Riders, CMA, Christian mm -hmm. Motorcycle Association. <coughs> and uh, after a couple of years being with them, um, they asked me to be chaplain voted on it yep. so I'm chaplain of, of uh, New Life Riders now also tremendous you know God has a plan all the way through and he told you a long time ago that 40 30 40 years ago that you would see revival that's what I believe in my heart yeah 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 but about 30 33 years ago when I got first got saved <clears throat> yeah uh, I, I I was so on fire I was so thankful I was so thankful you know, when I got healed from that, that ruptured disc is when I gave my life to Christ. I didn't know. I didn't know a clue. I didn't have a clue. When you say you're on fire, how do you keep the fire, Nick? How, how do you keep the fire? Put my faith in Him. Yeah. Put, put my nose in the Word. Okay. All Tell right. people about Jesus. Every day.
every day, yep. wherever I can go, yep. whoever I can talk to, yep. <clears throat> somebody has to hear. That's right. And somebody has to be set free. There you go. Set free. That's the name of the next program. <laughs> it's coming right after this, so that's great. Um, so you're pastor of a church in, in Winthrop. I am. And, um, you know, and you got one possibly starting in Saugus. In Saugus, yeah. Working on that now. Wow. <clears throat> this is... Uh, this is from a guy that threw a Bible at a radio. Yep. Unbelievable. That's right. That's great. Didn't have a clue what the what was in it uh, and or what it was about. I'm here, here now, I just love it. Tell me, where do you think we are on the eternity clock? One minute to midnight. Yeah. I <laughs> One minute to midnight, and uh, so many people are. <clears throat> I, I think of uh, the saying that Nero played the fiddle while Rome was burning. Yeah. And I see that happening. I, I just feel that that's what's going on here in America. I feel that's happening in, in the churches. I feel that's happening with people all around. We're so caught up in pleasures yeah. today, so caught up in, in self and in doing things our own way uh, that uh, we neglect what, what is the most important thing, mm -hmm. God Almighty. Yeah. And people need to get back to God before it's too late. Yeah. <clears throat> that relationship with him, one on one. Gotta have a relationship. It can't be religion. Right. Religion doesn't do it. No. So so every day you're up there and you're getting the word, you come in with, to your father and say, Daddy, what's happening? Wherever I can go, whenever I every moment. Yeah. See that's that's the difference. Uh Dick you know, let me I asked you what you know, where you, where you think we are in the terms of the clock. But specifically if if you could just take a couple of minutes and, and just tell people how serious this is. People have got to stop playing games with God. Mm. Everything that is going on in this world today mm -hmm. <clears throat> is written right there in the Word of God. Mm. All the rebellion, all of the, the, the turmoil, the, the anger, the fighting, the earthquakes, the floods, there's so much and everybody's just moving on as if it doesn't exist. Yeah. They just don't understand <clears throat> how late it is in time. And Judgment Day is coming. Oh, yeah. No matter what anybody's going to say, there's going to, you know, a lot of people just say, you know, I don't believe that. You know, the Bible's written by men. And yeah. uh, I just say, well, you don't obviously don't know what you're talking about. And mm -hmm. you haven't really uh, gone deep enough to understand. You mm -hmm. haven't sought the truth. I would say to people today, you've got to look for the truth. If Jesus Christ is who he says he is, mm -hmm. then don't people think they, they, they should know enough or, or look enough to check this out? Yeah. yeah. They need to know this. Oh, yeah. Sought the truth, though. That's the number one priority. Got to look for the truth. Yeah. I was watching a, a program the other night on television about the planets and Neptune and Uranus and all these planets. And they, the scientists tell us there's 130 billion galaxies out galaxies. there, w which means how can you count 130 billion in my mind? Yeah. And this is the God that keeps everything in order and it's perfect, and we ignore him. This is nuts. Perfect. This is crazy. Everything's perfect. Yeah. He Does, said, you know, my, my children, they don't come and talk to me anymore. He doesn't make mistakes. You want to know how unique he is? Science, medical science has just recently, I guess, I don't know how long back, <clears throat> but discovered something. It's called laminins, and you can find that. You can research that, yeah. and I would hope that everybody would. Laminins. And what it is, they, it, it's so small that you can't see it. You know, obviously, it's, it, it, what it is is it's the glue that holds the cells together in the body. Wow. Okay? Now, you need a microscope yeah. to see a cell. Yeah. Well, it's the glue that holds the, the cells together. If the, if the laminins was not in the mm. body, we wouldn't we wouldn't exist. Right. We just come we'd come as the saying goes we'd come unglued. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the unique thing about God in laminins in the body is when He breathed His first first breath into Adam. Yeah. God knew about laminins. Yeah. God knew about Jesus and what His plan was with Jesus. Yeah. All right? And the reason being is because when you, they look at the laminins that holds the glue together, they're in the shape of a cross. Whoa. 
you know what, I'm glad we get to this point. We got two minutes, Dick. Mm -hmm. And I know you're familiar with inviting people that in the privacy of their own homes. Yeah. Uh, I tell them it's not fire insurance. It's not even though you're an insurance man now for the for the Lord. Yeah. We got about a minute. And a, just do what all of us have done on this set. Ask them into your heart. Would you lead us? I will. Go ahead. I will. You can run. You can hide. You can deny. You can do anything you want. You've heard the story. I've given you my testimony. Uh, you won't find your answers if you're hurting, if you're looking for answers in the, in the bottom of a bottle, if you're looking for your answers at the end of a needle in your arm. You won't find your answers there. You've got to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. If you don't, you're going to be stuck in bondage and chains and broken and hurt. I know there's some of you out there that are, uh, are listening and you're wondering, is it real? It's real. And I can assure you it's real. I'm a living testimony to that. But you might not believe that, and you don't have to. But I would tell you this. Go look for the truth. Go look for the truth. Come to Jesus. And if, you, if you're sitting there and you're hearing this, you're hearing it not because my mouth is moving and words are coming out, but because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. Mm. You're hearing something that's saying, I, 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 I hear this. And I've got to make a difference now. I've got to make a choice. You do have to make a choice. Again, it's not me. Holy Spirit speaking to you. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. He's the only one that will give you hope. Mm. He's the only one that can break you free from the chains of bondage, of all the things that hold you bound, whether you're mm. in low self-esteem or whatever it may be. Turn to Jesus. Give your life to Him. Pray with me. Pray with me right now. Father, Father God, Forgive me of all my sins, but for, Father, forgive me for not paying attention, for not listening, for, for not looking for you. I surrender my life to you right now. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come and live inside me and seal me with your Holy Spirit. I give my life to you. I surrender now. If I do this and I believe this with all my heart, I believe your word will say, I'm free, I'm whole, I'm born again as a child of God. Amen. Amen. Well, Dick, thank you so much for coming over and sharing yeah. the good Thanks news. Thanks for having me here. Um, if, listen, you can wrap your own words around that. If you said, can't remember what Dick said, it checks your heart, not necessarily yeah. your head. Do it, and if you need to get in, well, I won't say if you need to, but you do need to have fellowship with people that think alike. Yeah. There's yeah. a website coming up on the screen. You'll be able, or maybe it's already been up there. Get in touch with us over the website. And we'll hook you up. All right? And out there in television land, God bless you and have a great week. Thanks again, God bless Dick. you. God bless.